Chelsea are finally back after a long off-season, and as the official squad list for Chelsea's pre-season tour has now been released, and with our opponents awaiting us in the US, it's time we hopped back into our match preview series and predicted some lineups. Lads, lasses, and the rest of the masses, welcome to Season 2 of The Lead-In. Let's go. Let's firstly set the scene. It's Chelsea vs Wrexham, a repeat of the fixture we played in last season's preseason, and a good warm up before we face harder opposition. Now, Wrexham have already played two preseason games as their season starts before ours, beating Hanley Town 5 1 and more recently drawing 1 all with fellow Premier League side Bournemouth. Wrexham have done a little transfer business in the offseason, signing Arsenal goalkeeper Arthur Okonkwo, who was impressive in their last fixture. As well as this, they've added Charlton defensive midfielder George Dobson, who will be another name to look out for as Wrexham continue to make their way up the English football ladder. The more notable transfer news for us, though, is their departures. Long-time fans of the channel will remember names such as Ben Dozer, Aaron Hayden and Luke Young, all who have since departed the club and will surely be missed. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the possible lineup for this Wrexham team and see what we will be up against. Firstly, let's talk absentees. The Red Dragons are without a couple of names, notably star striker Paul Mullen, who is recovering from back surgery, and Jacob Mendy, who's undergone surgery for an Achilles issue as well. Apart from those two, Wrexham look fit and ready to go. I'll be putting Phil Parkinson's side into the same 3-5-2 or 5-3-2 formation we saw last time out, with the team staying unchanged from what it was versus Bournemouth. First up in goal though is going to be their new goalkeeper and the man I mentioned earlier, Arthur Okonkwo. The Nigerian will be looking to continue his good form from the last game into this one. The defence is started on the right, where the first wing-back will be a familiar name in Ryan Barnett. The centre-back trio will be a combination of youngster Max Cleworth on the right, Owen O'Connell in the centre, and the previously mentioned George Dobson acting as a centre-back on the left. Completing that line, but probably acting more as a left mid in this system will be ex-Wigan, West Brom and Stoke City man James McLean, who is covering for Jacob Mendy. Moving into the midfield, we'll start on the right again, James Jones will start here once again. Next to him will be a familiar name in Andy Cannon, who we saw last time, and finishing off the midfield line will be George Evans. That leaves the two men up top, and the very obvious choice here is Sam Dolby, who we've seen before. However, his usual partner in Paul Mullen is, as before mentioned, unable to play, so instead in that right striker role will be once again ex-Luton and Derby County forward Jack Marriott to lead the line. That's just a brief look at what their team could look like. As it's preseason, there can and will be an abundance of changes at half time, so we should see all of these names at some point. Now let's turn our attention to Chelsea and see what our first lineup of preseason could be. Firstly, there are some notable absentees from our squad currently Cole Palmer, Connor Gallagher, Mark Kukurea, Enzo Fernandez, and Moises Caicedo are all still not back from international duties and all their holidays, so haven't met up with the squad yet and won't feature here. Quick editor's note here, Caicedo is with the squad now and is an option for the right side of 8 roll as he returned from his holiday early, but I'm not sure if he'll feature as he hasn't trained with the team very much. Georgi Petrovic and Amari Kellerman are nursing injuries so haven't travelled, and the surprising news that Trevor Chalabar, as well as Alfie Gilchrist, Didi Fofana, Chase Ray Cassade and David Washington have been left out of the squad means they won't be available either. I'll be putting Enzo Maresca's Chelsea team in his notorious 4-3-3 formation which may or may not change into the 3-4-3 system I've spoken about extensively in the past. This team will be a mixture of youth and experience in my opinion, with a different 11 starting the second half that starts the first. As it's the first game, I don't expect this to be a full strength side, so I'll be starting some players that I don't expect will be starters next season. Starting with the goalkeeper, I'm going to be putting in Robert Sanchez. Petrovic is injured, and as we are yet to bring in a new goalkeeper, the Spaniard will most likely start over Bettinelli, Bergstrom or Eddie Beach. For the back four, as it's our first game, I think we'd like to have a strong start, so what better way to kick off the defence than with our club captain, Rhys James. The centre-back partnership will be a combination of Axel Di Sassi on the right and Benoit Badia-Shiel on the left. Finally, over in the left-back spot, I'm giving a surprise start to new signing Renato Vega, who can play in a variety of roles but has been listed as a defender in the squad sheet for this US tour. Moving into the midfield, we'll start with a holding role. I expect Romeo Lavia to play here at the base of the three. On the right side, this can only be one person in my opinion, and that's Carney Chukwameka. 
Finally, on the left will be brand new Chelsea midfielder and my pick for player of the match, Kiernan Dewsbury Hall. He'll bring some much needed experience to this younger midfield. Ahead of them in the attacking roles, let's start on the right. I reckon Noni Madueke is a nailed on starter, so I'll be putting him in as a more experienced option as the rest of this front line is pretty inexperienced. Let's shift to the left hand side and I'm saying this more as a hope than an actual prediction, but I think this is the perfect game for Tyreek George to show us what he can do. Up top will once again be another young talent, as Nicholas Jackson is only just back from an ankle injury, I don't want to rush him into playing, so I reckon Mark Guillou will start here. This being a preseason game grants us the opportunity to field two 11s, as there are unlimited substitutions, so I'm going to quickly predict the lineup for the second half too. Starting with the goalkeeper, I expect Bergstrom to play as he's the closest to the first team in my opinion. The four defenders will be Malo Gusto, Wesley Fofana, Tosin Adarabioyo, and Levi Colwell. In the middle, we should see Uga Chukwu as the furthest man back, with Santos next to him, and Nkunku as the furthest man forward. We've seen from recent training that he's been deployed in this inside 10 slash 8 position. Finally, the three attackers will be a combination of Angelo Gabriel on the right, Misha Mudrik on the left, and Armando Broya down the middle. Obviously, this leaves out a few names who I'd expect would feature in some of the next games, those being Raheem Sterling, Joshua Chempong, Ben Chilwell, and of course Nicholas Jackson, who I mentioned before. Apart from that, I think these are the most balanced teams we can slash will field, whilst giving chances to some youth players. So those are my lineups, and I'd love to hear from you guys too, so for today's comment question of the day, answer me this. What team would you pick from the available players, and why? Let me know in the comments down below with QOTD at the start as always, and I'll heart my favourite answers. Now let's take a look at how Chelsea can navigate this game tactically, and see how we can beat Wrexham in this match. So first of all, let's take a look at the system in general and the formation that we kind of play. We've heard from the press conference and seen from some training from the US that Enzo will in fact invert one of the fullbacks into that 3-4-3 type system. Now he discussed multiple different players that can play that way. Um, I specifically set this team up to obviously be a balance between experienced players and youngsters, but also I wanted it to be not so one dimensional in terms of who we invert. Obviously the main one being James, who's probably going to invert into the midfield, and obviously Enzo Maresco touched on that and said that he's likely the one to play there, and so can Gusto if he's playing there. Uh, Vega can also invert, obviously he's very capable of playing as a CDM, or as a left back, or as a centre back, he's very very versatile. Um, so we could see them swapping over and doing, like, doing some inverting on the right, some inverting on the left, it depends on the situation that's kind of going on in the game at the time. Now obviously if we actually move the players into that formation i'm going to be using james as the example because i think he's the most likely to do this obviously this switches us into a different formation we're not going to be staying in that 4-3-3 instead we'll be in this 3-4-3 with the box midfield that we've kind of spoken about before but the thing which might be a bit different with this formation and the because listen it's not going to be completely like leicester's obviously there will be differences because of the players being different i do think that this will kind of change more into this 3-4-3 but it more so in a diamond i feel like James will probably have more license to get forward. I think Lavia will probably sit a bit deeper as a six. Obviously, Kieran Dewsby Hall is a very good eight and he can get up and down. So him playing in this left side as this kind of left-sided eight is good. And obviously, Carney is a more attacking player. Even though he can play as an eight, I feel like he's better as a 10. And here would be a really good place for him to play. So we could almost play this box midfield, but in a diamond instead of a square. Now, it, obviously this depends on the face of the game and if we are very much on top of Wrexham which we'll expect to be doing we'll expect to have a lot of possession in this game uh, then we can obviously push uh, KDH much higher and then we can play in that box if we're playing more like this with obviously with our centre backs further forward uh, just for this example I'm not going to do that but so we can play in either way but it kind of depends on which phase of play i feel like if we're building out i think uh, lavia will drop a bit deeper if we're really on top and we're in this final phase then i think these two will both act as tens rather than one acting as an eight but obviously kiernan is going to be the more defensive of the twos and the mids in this system and obviously when we are situated in this box it gives license to the two wingers which in this case is georgia madueke to push really really wide because the central space is occupied by these two. We saw this a lot with Poch's like 3-2-5 two, that he used at the end of the season. Obviously when we have these two centre mids playing here, these two can get really, really wide. 
Now, this is especially important against Wrexham because we know how they're going to play. Obviously, they're going to set up in this 3-5-2, which in the grand scheme of things is basically going to be a 5-3-2 because they're not going to have much of the ball. So if we actually kind of set them up here with their back four, their back five, see the difference between playing this against back fours and back fives is that obviously the gaps between the defenders are much smaller because there's an extra player filling in that space so stretching them out wide is really really important obviously George and Madaweke are gonna have to play really close to the touchline try and drag out their their opposite numbers and though this won't create much space it'll create some space and obviously when these gaps get wider over here we can obviously get runs from Carney or Kin and into those spaces but it's more so that I feel like it'll shift the entire defense around right so these guys will obviously try and double up in certain situations obviously there will be center mids here as well to navigate but just for this example I'm not going to be putting them in if we can get these guys coming out here then it creates this space into the box which is really really important obviously not only is the centre mid's going to be able to exploit this space but obviously Giyu who I've put here or the, whoever is playing at striker at the time they can run into here and what I kind of the reason why I feel like playing James here is particularly good for us is that it kind of opens up this opportunity obviously with Carney getting higher than KDH that we can get Giyu into the back post with Carney occupying this space and if James is bombing up and down he's got the license to do that then those really kind of late crosses into the far post are going to be really really good from James I think he's going to be really really creative from this right center mid role and that's something we could obviously see quite a lot in general I feel like Wrexham it's going to be a pretty tough test for us obviously we've struggled in the past at breaking down low blocks and this will be another situation where we're going to have to try and navigate one now I don't know how exactly this team will be able to do that obviously Enzo will have to find his own solutions there but I can offer my insight into what I think we will have to do and it's pretty much the same as what you have to do against back fours is the same you have to do against back fives what you need in these areas is very fast quick snappy passing which moves the opposition defenders around now you can't be be slow in possession obviously we know that this is going to be a possession based side we can't be slow with that possession because it just gives them time to shift over and shift across say if we're trying to switch the ball over to this right side if we do this in too many passes the, the defenders are just going to get across if we do this quickly and as we kind of saw from Enzo's training videos when you get that diagonal that opportunity for a diagonal which would probably be from from Lavia or James out to the whichever wing when that happens it needs to be quick so obviously they can't get across and then the spaces open up as they're moving across to try and make up make up for lost time basically and obviously when the opportunity then arises after we've been playing these snappy passes to play the incisive pass forward that's when we kind of strike and when we'll get our openings it's in that middle phase where the defenders are not expecting passes to come that we can kind of catch them out so if the ball has been switched over to Madaweke for example and he's drifting inside to try and to drive forward into the into the box obviously this is going to occupy these two defenders and this player will obviously have to track you we can see so this is just a, a very rudimentary example but we can see from here now we can get a space for for carney to get into this kind of position if the ball gets fed into him now we've got this space to exploit here which can get two shots on target or two cutbacks depending on whether Giu is going to be there for a tap in or whatever and the reason why i kind of mentioned doing this snappy passing instead of crossing the ball in from wide areas for example which is obviously we, something we can do we do have wide wingers i just don't think that's going to be a very successful thing again against Wrexham in general they're quite a tall team they're quite a physical team as most lower league sides are and because they are playing this five of the back system they obviously have three center backs obviously this left center back is probably going to be occupied by a center mid but he is a big lad anyway so they're all very tall in here they're all good at winning their aerial duels and our forwards aren't the tallest obviously George is not very tall Giyu is is taller but he's obviously not going to be able to battle against three center backs obviously Madaweke is going to be more out wide and not in the box so we're going to have to find basically different avenues because because swinging in crosses is probably not going to be the best idea unless they are absolutely pinpoint like the ones we could see from James from this position because you know how good he is he's one of those players that can definitely unlock the defense with a cross and get it into a certain situation where the, the defenders just can't simply can't defend against it but apart from that 
it's basically no reason for us to play the balls high if we're going for cutbacks that's a bit of a different story because obviously we eliminate that aerial presence that they have if we are getting into the byline obviously we know Madawake likes getting to the byline here and cutting it onto uh into the middle from his right foot if we can get those opportunities then obviously we all want that that's basically a very good way for us to get through as well i just don't think that'll be as successful because of how many players they're going to have in the way to to do that so i think if we stick to just doing the snappy passing we'll eventually find openings obviously wrexham are a good team and they did hold bournemouth to a 1-1 one -one draw but they're not going to be too much of an issue i wouldn't imagine obviously this is our first game of preseason, so we may be a bit rusty so maybe they get a bit more confidence from that we'll have to wait and see now this back five kind of three five two or five three two system that wrecks and play is not only going to be a test for us in terms of, of terms of breaking it down but also going to be a test in defensive scenarios as well because obviously they're going to be having to play on the counter a lot of the time they're going to probably play a lot of long balls up to the two strikers we know how these types of teams play and we're also going to have to be ready for that now this system is basically designed to stop counter attacks obviously you have the five players back which you don't usually have when you play possession based football you usually have four players as, a, as basically a maximum usually you'll have two, two or three players with both your fullbacks getting really high up the pitch uh, so you'll have the two center backs and maybe the holding midfielder there so three is usually kind of commonplace in teams that like to have a lot of the ball this team has five so it, this is much more set up to prepare against those counter attacks and obviously one of the things that this Enzo Maresca system employs is a very very solid counter pressing style where as soon as we lose the ball we'll try and step on the gas and win the ball back before it becomes an issue and obviously when the ball does when the ball does turn over and we have to defend against counter attacks obviously we know what's going to happen the center backs are going to shift across james will go back into his natural right back position and will defend more in a four in a four three three a more more typical four three three as it were uh, with obviously lavia dropping a bit deeper kdh coming here and carney being here now the final test that i think we're going to see in this game and what we've kind of got to see whether we'll actually work out is Sanchez and his ability on the ball to play passes and whether he's going to be suited to this system or not obviously there's been a lot of flags raised because he isn't the greatest at distribution I think he's personally a lot better than people give him credit for and I think that under a possession based style coach I think he'll do a lot better than he did when he was playing for Pochettino in that chaos ball kind of situation but obviously this is going to be a massive test for him can he competently play the ball short can he not panic when he's under pressure can he play the ball out when under pressure obviously we don't know if we're going to be under pressure because of how defensive Wrexham usually play but if he is put under any pressure can he deal with that the main thing I want to be able to see in this game is if Badia Shield moves over to the left and he's tasked with coming into the center back role if he is secure enough in this kind of playmaker -y goalkeeper role and can he get us out through the lines because obviously if we do get pressed let's just take another player here for example if we do get pressed and he has to play that ball into lavia around the corner or something that's going to be a big way for us to actually not only navigate the press but then create opportunities further up the pitch going through that press so it all starts with the goalkeeper and it's going to be a big test whether he can keep his nerve obviously we might see other players in this position as well i think sanchez is the main one for for preseason we may not even see him come off obviously we know in preseason we usually do wholesale changes at half time i don't know if he will come off because he is so important and the part the passing aspect of of the goalkeeper is so important in this in this system i'm not sure if bergstrom or beach will probably get an opportunity uh, we'll have to wait and see now quickly i just wanted to also show that if we were playing the second half team that i put out uh, how that would operate and how that would set up in this system obviously i think what would most likely happen is that we would obviously shift and Kunku to this left hand side to play off the left as this kind of inside 10 santos would be the more box to box midfielder with ugachukwu playing as the more deeper midfielder gusto would invert as we kind of discussed earlier he has been doing that in training fafana would shift the cross and then we have tosin in the center with colwell playing as this left back slash left center back role where he can play those over the top passes obviously i've got mudrick here as the left winger i put armando broya in here because he's the more strikery of the two players that could play here obviously jackson is still nursing his ankle injury i think so i don't know if he will uh, feature at all 
obviously we have Angelo and these two do not have numbers because they haven't been given numbers yet uh, obviously we have Angelo on the right wing who we know from other from the last preseason how well he can play and obviously Santos in this kind of more box-to-box -box role obviously we know from him playing for the Brazilian youth team he is very good at actually getting up the pitch despite him being a defensive midfielder he's very very good at getting into the box and getting goals the other option here because obviously Caicedo has now come back and he has done one training session with the team the other option is to play Caicedo in this role and what I think that would do is that, that would push Nkunku into the striker role with Santos kind of operating as a more defensive midfielder and um, Caicedo being a bit more box to box um, but I, for, for now I haven't put Caicedo in just because he is only going to be under one training session I think it's a bit too fast to rush him into the team without having the practice of playing in this system whereas all the other players kind of do so I haven't put that in there but that's definitely an option we could see that as well um, if he is able to play that really really throws off my uh, both of my predicted lineups but there we go for a score prediction, I'm going to be predicting a rather expected Chelsea win, but I reckon Wrexham will put up more of a fight than we expect. I think that we'll win the game 3-1, with Madaweke getting a goal, KDH with a goal and assist, and Nkunku notching a third in the second half. I expect Wrexham to be able to get at least one goal as we adapt to this new style, so I'm going to say that Sam Dolby gets one in the latter stages of the first half. We'll have to wait until the game to see if any of my predictions are correct, and as always, I'll be live streaming immediately after the game with Feeling Blue to review the match, so make sure you come through if you are able. But if you can't wait until then, YouTube reckons you'll enjoy one of these two videos on screen in the meantime. Thank you guys so much for watching as ever, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues!